friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest for those of you who are new and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. Today I'm going to share some of my older quilts. We've been going through these. Um, I used to use a hand guided handy quilter and HQ 16 so uh, everything I'm going to show you today is what I did when I was doing hand guided. I did that for about 10, 11 years. I got my hand guided machine in 20, late 2010 and in 2011 really started quilting for others as well as um, doing my own things. And in 2020 I sold that machine and bought a digital. So I'm now doing all digital edge to edge pantographs. Um, but it was asked of me to show some of my older stuff. So we're going to start through those. And then underneath here I have a whole ton of customer quilts. So I don't have any personal sewing from this week. Um, but we do have an announcement. We did have a baby grandbaby born last week, um, eight pounds, three ounces. He is adorable and we are just so enjoying him, trying to soak him all up. And uh, he's um, he joins two big brothers, um, big brothers. His brothers are 13 and 12. And uh, so he is making a grand entrance into uh, our son's family. Then we have a daughter who is due any day here. I'm expecting a call at any time and ready to uh, fly out the door, have my bag packed, ready to go when I get that phone call as well. We're also prepping for a wedding. Um, I have another daughter who's getting married in June. The invitations arrived last week and they've been addressing those and getting those all ready to mail out in the near future. So things are happening around here. So I didn't get any personal sewing done, but a lot of good uh, family activities going on. But I wanted to show some of my older things. So we'll start out with this one. This is just, um, I used some fabric that was left over. These are actually shirts that were left over. Um, kind of a knit material. Again, this is at a time when I, um, I used a lot of what I had and so clothing was something that I used and put it together with other uh, materials. So just a very simple pattern, just five inch squares and I did um, on every so every so often did an embroidered, not embroidered, an applique square in the center of some. I know this was a pattern of somebody's, maybe I want to say Kim Schaefer. Um, and if I can find that pattern, I'll link it down below. But it's fairly long, so it could be used as a, um, a table runner on a long uh, table or also at the end of a bed. I did in two different colorways. I did these colors with the white sashing, and then I also did one, these colors, these same colors with um, black sashing. And then on the back, I did larger squares. This is actually cotton fabric that I had from something. So it's actually reversible, can be used either way, more of the springtime colors and um but this is hand guided work that i did back then so um if you remember last week i did I showed a lot of stippling that i did and then i did some meander with some stars or meander with some leaves or i'd started doing some curly cues and so this one is a little later on where i'm actually um coming in so um kind of a swirl but then off of that swirl i started doing some feather type um designs there. So again, just an all over pattern. Um, and this is something I would practice and practice and practice. And then again, I say I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'm not a doodler. And so I really had to practice on my hand guided. I really had to practice until it was um, what I felt was proficient enough to put on a customer quilt or my own quilt. And um, so again, something that you can do on if you're doing hand guided, you just swirl in, but instead of just echoing that shape back out, you're actually creating feather type, um, you know, motifs on that backbone of that of that spiral. And then this one, you can see I actually echoed it again, and that was able to then get me to travel up to another one. So anytime you need to travel to another part of your quilt, echoing is a great thing to do. So echoing just means I'm really just tracing about a quarter inch away from the last, maybe a half inch at the most, away from the last design. I came up here and got to a point and then um, started another swirl up there. This is all white thread. Um, so yeah, one of my early projects. So another design and um, you, know, you just gotta practice, practice, practice. 
So then this, again, I do not remember um, patterns. I want to say this is a Kim Deal pattern, but maybe not. Um, maybe a Joe Morton pattern. I really don't remember. A lot of reproductions. I wish I knew the name of the, of the pattern. I'll have to go back and see if I can find it. If I find it, I'll link it down below. But um, very tiny pieces. I mean, right here. So if you can see the block, this is actually a square within a square, this little block right here. So it makes it look like it's a circle, like it's spinning around, but this block is a square and a square, and then this block is just two rectangle pieces on top of each other and a square in the middle. Um, so a nice effect. And then the sashing, you see the sashing is three rows, but then it is, um, what is that, a nine patch as the cornerstone. So I love this. I love reproduction. I love um, Civil War type. I need to do more. I have lots of fabric. I love this. Um, just really love it. Love the history. And, uh, very pretty. And then the backing fabric, again, a reproduction. Print. So then for this pantograph, um, if you've looked through Kim Deal's books, uh, a lot of her quilting that she suggests on her quilts, at least in her early books, I haven't looked lately, but she a lot of times would do um, a circle, and then when you get to the center of the circle, you just just work your way out. You know, you don't even you just go across the other lines. So a little different than what I'd done before, but I thought if Kim Deal can do it, I can do it too, right? And so a circle that comes in, and then you just um, just go across those lines. So this fabric is very busy, but we'll see if we can get in here close enough that maybe you can see that. She finished a lot of her quilts that way in a lot of her books. And um, more of a traditional, you know, very simple design because you're doing reproduction. You kind of want to stay with the time um, period of the, of the fabrics and the patterns that you're using. Um, I can see on this one that my, again, I'm doing hand guided. I did have stitch regulator on. Um, but I tend to move my machine very fast when I was doing a hand guided. And so I can see on here my, my stitches are fairly big. It does, my, um, I probably just moved too fast and <laughs> trying to get done. And also, um, I, my tension's not great on here. I can see some tension, almost like the thread sitting on top of the fabric a little bit for, Perfect tension, what I like is where you don't, nothing's laying on the top, nothing's laying on the bottom. That those stitches are actually meeting on the inside of that batting. Um, and so they lock there, so you're getting good stitch points on the top, good stitch points on the back. When I'm on my hand, or when I'm on my, um, my Amara now, I do check my tension very often. Every bobbin I check, um, I do use pre-wound bobbins. And uh, let me show you my TOA gauge. So speaking of tension, every bobbin that I do, I do check on a TOA gauge. I try to get it right around 200. And you can Google this to figure out how to use it. And um, But I do check every bobbin, whether it's my bobbin that I wind myself, whether it is a pre-wound bobbin, I check every one of them. Um, and I want to get it around 200 and then when I put it when I start a new bobbin I will check the bottom if I'm not happy with the tension Because I feel like it's pulling too far to the bottom if your thread is sitting on the bottom of your quilt That means your bobbin is pulling your um, your thread too much and your bobbin is too tight And so even if it's at 200 on my toe gauge I'll bring it back and I'll loosen it up just a tad if I feel like my bobbin thread is is pulling too much to the bottom um, so I use, I adjust my bobbin thread more than I ever adjust the top. If I have adjusted the bottom to everything that I can do and I'm still not happy, then I may adjust the top thread a little bit. Um, but this sits on my desk and I use this every time I use a bobbin. So, and I still check. I still, you know, I showed you back at Christmas time that my husband got me a flashlight that sits in my cart in between my machines and I check the tension on the bottom as well. And I can have um, perfect tension on a quilt and load another quilt, use the same thread, the same bobbin, and the tension will be different. Threads are different, I, I mean, I, fabrics are different, um, 
it, there, there's so many variables and so I really check tension a lot it's one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine and I have been known to st you know um, tear out whole rows because I wasn't happy with with the tension it's just one of those things I think it makes a quilt and I can see in my early quilts that not all my tension is really really great um, but again it's the more you do the better you get and it's still a learning process and I'm still I, I'm st it's a constant tension is one of the things I think it's a constant battle um, and figuring out your machines and all of that but that's a little bit about tension and that's another pattern that you can practice just um, let me try to get in here close again maybe that wasn't very noticeable so a, you're doing circles in so here I'm doing a circle uh, I'm trying to follow my path line um, so just a circle in, and then once I get to the middle, then I just crossed over those lines, did a circle here, so it was okay if circles crossed. So even like these two larger circles, they're crossing a little bit here, almost like um, ripples on water or something like that. Eventually they're going to cross, and uh, just another pattern to practice. All right, another table runner that I did. <laughs> so during this time... Um, you know, again, you know, I have seven children. This is a busy time back then. Our youngest son was born with um, Down syndrome and quite a bit of health issues the first three or four years of his life. And so um, I don't have a lot of big quilts during this time. And if I did, I probably sold them in the pumpkin patch. Um, so I have a lot of small things. But I think, again, this is a Kim Schaefer um, pattern and I'll link it down below if I can find it so a bit a table runner goes right in the middle love the checkerboard in the middle and then the tulips on either end are applique and um, I do all machine embroidery or machine applique around the edges and just a spring a fun spring quilt the back is just a simple brown but you can really see the design, I think, on the back of here. So again, I'm just practicing new designs. So now I've gotten to the point I'm doing a flower. I really like this one. This one was fun. So um, you do the flower. You go in and make the circle. And it's not, they're kind of wonky, but, you know, the quilt top is kind of wonky. It's one of those kind of patterns. So, um, so I came in and just almost not a complete circle. It's more like a a loop and then I did petals around five petals and then came back and touched a few loop the loops around and then went to another flower there so not not perfect not um, you know edge to edge pantograph this is hand guided fun this is human and um, another design again you just practice and practice on a marker board or on fabric or you know on a table runner <laughs> on a table runner so then i made another one and here i got into a little more um tried to do a little more custom quilt and um you can see why i switched to digital because again i'm not i'm not an artist i wasn't i i like custom and I want to get better at it um, but it's not great this again is a Kim Schaefer pattern the um, flowers in the middle of each block are um, a machine applique onto there pretty sure this is a Kim Schaefer if not it's a Nancy Halverson but I think it's Kim Schaefer and this is all just scrap fabrics love that border the sashing all done in the different greens you can see the other side. This is a very long table runner. We use this down the middle of our table all the time, especially springtime. And then even sometimes um, because we just have this green um, plaid on the back, not really a plaid, but uh, on the back, a lot of times we'll flip this over and um, fall time and Christmas time we'll use this on the table as well. So double duty with your, pan with your um, uh, table runners if you can. So this one... Like I said, I tried to do a little more custom work. So with this one, I echoed the swirl in the middle. What makes me think it may be a Nancy Halverson is Nancy Halverson did a lot of swirls like this. So maybe it is hers, but uh, I'll look it up to be sure. And then I, I uh, kind of echoed inside each one of the petals. You can see that, all hand guided. And then what I did around the rest in all of the sashing work is I just did loops, loops all around all there 
So I kind of tried to do a little more custom inside the flowers and then just did loops around the edge. And I know custom quilting, they can get so fancy and so, so beautiful. And maybe someday I'll try some of that on my own, but this is as far as I got <laughs> with my own uh, custom things. All right, I have one more I was gonna show you today. This one is actually a panel and it, it's a flag panel. Um, along the grunge line, all of the, the fabrics are the grungy stuff, but I didn't put the, the flag together. It was all a panel. All I did was add some extras around the edge to make it a little um, wider and a little bit on the top and bottom uh, to finish it out. The backing is a red with stars. did a red um, binding that's the same. So this used to sit in our, it used to hang in our um, laundry room. We had an old, uh, we had an old dresser that I had pulled the drawers out of and made it like cubbies for my kids' boots and shoes. And um, we left a couple of the top drawers in and then behind it, we added an old window behind there and then some some railings on the side kind of made it like a, a seat where you could sit down, put your boots on, and you would have your boots underneath. And then this hung on that old window that was on the back side of it. And I love this. It was very patriotic. A lot of things in our, our laundry room at that time, mudroom, laundry room, you came in the back door, and, and this is what you saw. And so this hung right there, had a lot of patriotic things there. And I loved this for a long time. So this pantograph, I was trying to practice wood grain. So wood grain is very similar if you're doing circles, uh, if you're doing spirals and then working yourself out, going over doing another spiral, then working yourself out. Well, wood grain is the same idea, except you're coming in, it's more ellipses with points on the end. So you're coming in and you're kind of pointing and then over to this side and a point and you work yourself in and then you get to a point where you work yourself back out. But again, keeping those, uh, you know, in ellipse type pattern it's more of an elongated pattern but you're pointing at the end and um, so almost like a leaf in some ways except you keep it all on the horizontal let me switch to this side but you so you know like a leaf where we talked about last week where it's kind of in all directions a leaf pile would be going in all directions the wood grain is all horizontal you keep it very very horizontal um, and you're you know, you're, um, you can't go all the way across the quilt at once. You're kind of going across and working yourself back and going across and working yourself back. So you almost do it um, a little bit and then you kind of backtrack a little bit to go a little bit farther down just so that you can get it all integrated. And I didn't want, you know, solid lines where you could see where I did one whole wood grain all the way across. So I do a little bit and then I come back and do a little bit down here, a little bit down here, and then I come back up and just back and forth. And I really feel this is one of the few last things I did on my hand-guided machine. Wood grain was a fun pantograph, almost uh, could be used on water as well, any uh, quilts that you had with water, um, fish, those kind of things. I think it kind of takes on that water look when you put it on those. Um, it can't be used on everything. Wood grain is a kind of, um, specialized pantograph because when it when it works with a quilt it's really great when it doesn't it you know it's it's not one that you would put on every quilt but I felt like with the flag quilt it really went well with the grunge almost this is kind of like the flags that are made out of um, you know old picket fence things or something like that that's the feel that it gave me so that's why I was doing that kind of a wood green pantograph this is a cream color thread the white is not a true white it's more of a creamy color and um, and yeah, love this one. This one's always been just for show. It's always just hung up. It's not one that we use um, out for anything besides hanging up. But, so those are some of my, uh, my uh, personal projects from years ago. Those are all hand-guided things. And like I said, I switched to a digital long arm in 2020. And in 2024, I added a second one. So I'm running two digital long arms at this point. I'm both handy quilters, both handy quilter Amaras, and I uh, love the process. So let me show you all the customer quilts I finished on those two long arm machines this week.
So these first several quilts that I'm going to show you have already gone home. I met with Jennifer last week to get these back to her. So this first one is called Squared Up by the Quilted Pillow, and she has an Etsy shop. This um, Jennifer did her pattern in fabrics, uh, um, several different things. She used a Kona solids for part of it, and then she also used some grunge, you can see, and then the um, animal print. This is called Into the Woods by Timeless Treasures. A uh, very simple design, but love this. This is for a baby um, that she was passing this on to. Love the woodsy feel to it. The blues and greens are very nice. You can see on the quilted pillow on her um, Etsy shop, she has a much more modern feel with very solid prints. Um, and so I love that Jennifer took that pattern and created her own, adding some, she's got some solids in there, but also adding the print. Fussy cutting that uh, motif in the middle is a great idea and a very boyish quilt, really fun. So you can see on the backing, she used that minky. Uh, I love the minky, it's so soft. It gives the quilt a little bit of a weighted feel too. And um, with the with the uh, batting in between and then the, the minky on the back, this is done in a gray color. And then the pantograph. This one is called Diagonal Plaid Hexes. So you've seen the diagonal plaid before and um, that's more of a square shape that is uh, rounded on the corners with the hexi. You then get the six-sided figure, and I did shrink this down quite a bit. This is for a baby quilt. This added super, super amount of texture on the back on that minky, and it was just adorable. Um, so the, those hexes, it may be hard to tell in the picture quite, you know, but they're, they're much smaller than my fist. I mean, they're probably only two or three inches um, in size. So really shrunk it down because it's for a baby quilt, wanted a lot of texture on it, and um, just created a really, really pretty quilt. So we did use a cream color thread on this one. Even though the backing was a gray, I didn't want to use gray on the front. I felt like this was a lighter, airier quilt, so I used the cream color just to keep it light and airy. Uh, sometimes a gray can um, tone it down a little bit, and I didn't feel that this needed to be toned down. So this measures 42 by 42, so a great little baby quilt to lay out on the floor and let them do their tummy time or uh, some sort of thing like that. And so just a beautiful quilt. So here is a second one by Jennifer. Her second quilt is called Quilt Miss Spectacular. This is the 2021 version. I will link this down below because it looks like this is done every year. It's a variety of different designers and it's the 12 days of Christmas. So each designer creates a block to go along with um, and at the beginning of the holiday season. So every day you get a different block to make and these are just adorable. Jennifer used different various fabrics, a lot of solids, greens, um, and the purplish mauve color, love that, the gnome and the angel. Uh, my favorite was the mittens and how she did with the, the fabric there that made it look like the, knit, the mittens were knitted and the, um, the ice skate with the polka dot skate I think was absolutely adorable. So every year you can sign up to do this um, quilt miss spectacular and then um, you get to have a fun quilt like this at the end. Love the white border all the way around and then Jennifer asked for the spiral rings pantograph and I think this was a perfect um, quilt. Kind of gives it that wintry feel um, without overpowering the design. You got a lot of uh, pretty motifs and, and decorations on the front. So the spiral just adds that little hint of wintry, blustery feel with the circles. We did use a cream color thread on this as well. The white was not a true white. So, and uh, the backing was a little darker. So um, the cream kind of matched with both um, parts of that. So this is all pieced. I don't believe any, I don't know. I didn't see the patterns themselves. Um, so I don't know if some of them are foundation paper pieced or they're piecing, but you'll want to sign up uh, to be a part of that Quiltmas Spectacular this year when the holidays come around. All right, you won't want to miss Jennifer's third quilt.
This third quilt is called Bloom by Libs Elliott. The fabric is all Libs Elliott as well. And if you know Libs Elliott, you know it's bright and bold and so intricate and so many designs. Love this quilt. This is one of those that needs to be hung up on a wall just to get the full um, majesty of this quilt. All of the things that are going on, the circle shapes, and uh, oh my goodness, it's just incredible all the things that are are there. The colors are striking, they're very bold and bright, and this quilt measures 48 by 48, so it'll make a great wall hanging as well. Love the bright colors. The fabrics are Atomic by Libs Elliott. You can find those on Etsy or your favorite um, quilt store. And again, this is Bloom. It's spelled B-L-O-E-M, but it's pronounced Bloom. This is a pattern on Libs Elliott um, site as well. So to go with all of the circles there, we went with a Soho pantograph. We didn't do this real tight because the, the top of this quilt is so busy. There's so much going on. I didn't want to compete with um, the circles and the, the shapes that are there. So made this Soho pantograph pretty large, uh, just so it, it echoes that same circle feel, um, but doesn't overpower or overtake the, the design that's going on there. The, the power of this quilt is in the fabrics and in the design of the quilt pattern and not in the quilting itself. Sometimes when you have a quilt that's a little, um, you know, you've got more open space, you've got more negative space, then that's when the quilting can take on a um, more prominent position in your quilt, I wanna say. Um, but if it's something busy and striking where the pattern is the quilt, then just let your quilting be um, a small hint in the background, almost like a secondary thing that they're not even gonna see till they get up close. And, um, but we did echo the same circle shape with the Soho. Soho is so versatile. It's one of those I've used on baby quilts. You can shrink it down and use it on baby quilts. It's a, just a good go-to pantograph. Um, if you don't know what else to put on a quilt, Soho usually will work. So love this one, um, love the bright colors. Jennifer was really happy with these three quilts when she got them back and as she's working on the binding. And I have another one of hers coming up in several weeks and it's a beauty too, so you won't wanna miss that one. So stay tuned for that one. All right, let's move on to Sarah's baby quilts. So Sarah's two quilts are basically the same, a little bit difference in fabrics. We have um, some more of an Aztec and, well the Aztec is in both of them. It's more this river rock that changes in uh, from one quilt to the other. The colors are a tad bit different, but very similar. The greens, the rusts, um, love this print here too. And then you've got this uh, fussy cut kind of um, Aztec coal mine, I don't know, kind of a Western theme going on. Love the colors. And then you can see how she starts out with a, the motif print in the middle and then does the different colors around and just works herself out and around the quilt. She does a lot of these baby quilts like this. She's done them in all different colorways. A super simple pattern. You just need to lay it out so that you get that uh, that medallion type effect when you do it. Love it, love it. This is all about, uh, looks like five inch squares. So whether you have a charm pack or whether you um, use your scraps up to make quilts like these. So the backing is a little different on each one. This one, because the front fabric's a little darker, she chose this one. This is Whisper Weave. This is a Nancy Halverson line and she has every color. I love this. So it reads as a solid a lot, you know, pretty much. But when you get in close, you have this little weave type um, um, design on the, on the fabric. And again, every color that you would need for a backing. It's very, very pretty. You can see the pantograph. We use the same pantograph on both quilts. This is a wood grain pantograph. This is now edge to edge, not doing my own hand guided. And um, did shrink this. This one comes in pretty big when you pull it into Pro Stitcher, so you can shrink it, make it much smaller. You know, there's the design. It's only about that big. And I didn't, because it's a baby quilt, because the squares on the front are only five inches, I didn't want to make this super huge. Um, kind of coordinate it to the size of your quilt, the um, intention of your quilt. 
used a cream color thread. Um, it shows up on the backing, but blends really nice with the front. Love the River Rocks fabric there too. That's really pretty. And uh, just pick your fabrics and go all the way around, coordinating colors. So if you look at this pattern here, this print here, that's more of the, the novelty print, I want to say, then you can pull every color that you need for the rest of the quilt from that, um, from that fabric right there. So you've got the mauve color, you've got the little bit of a pinkish color, and the browns, um, the, the darker burgundy and the green. So you've got a lighter green, you've got a darker green. So in this one, she used more of the lighter green, and the next one, she used a little more of the darker green the grays. I mean, the colors just look really nice. So pick one fabric that's got a lot of colors, you know, one novelty print maybe that you want to use, and then pull your other colors from that, and it really will complement the whole quilt. All right, and here is Sarah's second one. So the second one uses that same novelty print, the same Aztec print. The greens are basically the same except um, on the inner ones. These are a little darker green that one was on the other. And then she's added this striped. And so instead of the River Rocks and um, the other design, again, it's probably the same line. I don't know the names of fabrics, but the colors of this one are very similar to the colors in that other. Let me just grab it. So on this one you have um, know what they are stones or something that are in these colors and then on this print you have the the stripes but they're very much the same color line which makes me think that they're probably the same fabric line um, so using part of your charm pack in one quilt part of your charm pack in another you can make two different ones and that same pattern you start with the novelty print in the middle and then and then go around in a, in a medallion type effect. We did the same pantograph on this one. Because this fabric, um, she pulled out some of the lighter colors in this fabric for the backing on this one. So almost more of a peachy. A peachy color. This is a solid. Um, very pretty, but that pantograph shows up really well on that one. Same wood grain pantograph. Very pretty, so cute, so cute. All right, let's move on to another one. This is Joyce's quilt, and Joyce did hers all out of batiks. And so Joyce is in um, my local quilt guild, Scrap Basket Quilt Guild that meets in Brownsburg. And again, this year I am in charge of the challenge committee. And we decided this year to do a pre-cut and panel challenge. So each month there's a different um, pre-cut or different panel to use depending on the month. In March, it was um, a layer cake. And so Joyce created this using a layer cake of batiks. And so she did the layer cake and she created uh, the pinwheels from the layer cake. And uh, really fun. I'll link that, the PDF down below if you're interested. So I'm doing the same challenge in my uh, local quilt guild as I do on my quilt uh, circle membership. In both places, we do a drawing at the end of the month and um, you get a special gift if you win, so you have to be a part of one of those groups. But you can see the, P the PDF if you want, and you want to play along, I guess. And so for April, the one is a charm pack. If you've never used a charm pack, this is a challenge to, perhaps you've bought one and it's sitting on your shelf. So this would be a challenge to use that charm pack, any design, whether it's a quilt like, um, you know, you could do pinwheels even. Uh, whether it's a quilt like Joyce made, it could be a bag, it could be a table runner, and that's kind of how we run those challenges. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see what people create. But after 
Joyce showed this at our March meeting at Scrap Basket, then she gave it to me to do the quilting from. She did add some yellow sashing uh, in between the pinwheel blocks and then a little bit of um, a border around. So some of the leftover blocks she used across the middle of the backing and then separated with uh, the yellow batik and then the backing uh, fabric is the same that's on the borders on the front. So purples, uh, Joyce's quilts are always this color line. She loves this color line. So purples and blues and, and the pop of yellow is a lot of fun. It, it uh, gives your eye some place to, to look at and to rest and um, to separate it from all of the other colors going on. So the pantograph on this one, I was uh, looking through some websites and um, decided to do a new pantograph. This is called tooled leather. And I'm sure it's because you would put this on a leather belt or a leather purse or something like that. And I'll see if I can bring this in close so that you can see it. So when I saw this pantograph, I thought, I know the name says tooled leather, but for some reason it looked to me like a great pantograph to use on batiks. But batiks a lot of times have um, a leaf type look or a natural type of look. And I just felt with this pantograph, you can see in close, it has, I like this just little kind of uh, leafy type bump out they do. It's got some swirls, but it's got some points and just a little different than any I've used before. And I like the look of it on um, a batik fabric. I think it just went along with the the swirls, but the leaves as well. You can see down here, almost a heart shape, but not quite a heart shape. A little bit of a, a point out when it does the, the swirl around, and um, I just thought it was a very nice one. Did a cream color thread. Um, white is too bright, gray is too dark, so a cream works really well on this. Very pretty. I like that. Very soft, but without being um, overly feminine, I want to say, you know, overly frilly, uh, we'll use that word, instead of being overly frilly, but it's still got some swirls and some softness to it to go along with the batik um, kind of feel, but um, just classy. I like it. All right, let's move on to this one. Mary's quilt comes from an Adidas sitar of laundry basket quilts. This is her pattern called Primrose and also her fabric line called Primrose, done in a medallion type feature where you have um, the center and everything radiates out from the center. Classic uh, laundry basket quilts. This is just beautiful. The pinks, the turquoise, the grays, the browns, um, then the white, very floral, very feminine. Um, just beautiful, beautiful fabrics, beautiful pattern. I'm sure it was a lot of little pieces. This does come, uh, if you get on Laundry Basket Quilts website, they do have a kit that has the pieces pre-cut, not just the fabrics. You get them pre-cut, how amazing is that? So you could open up the box and start uh, piecing right away. No, have, no, no cutting at all. Um, that'd be a great feature, but there was only a few left when I looked yesterday, so you'll wanna grab that those quick. And then the pattern is also called Primrose. Just beautiful, just beautiful. You can see you have some um, similar blocks and then you know used throughout the quilt, lots of little pieces. Uh, you're making lots of several blocks and then, um, and then creating that pattern. Just absolutely beautiful. Then Mary did a blue border. And then she chose a Lumina. This is a Lumina wide back. 108 inch wide back in the cream color. Isn't that a beautiful compliment to the front? It has just a very subtle print on it, just a little bit of a, a leafy tree type feel to it, uh, but very subtle. And so I like that, you know, instead of just doing a muslin, um, gives a little bit of texture and design to the, the backing, but it, it leaves the quilt top to shine, um, but complements the quilt top very nicely. Again, used a cream color thread on this one. This pantograph is called Leaflet, 
and um, Mary didn't want anything too small, too dense. We've got a lot going on on the quilt top, just really wanted the softness there. So the leaflet creates that leaf shape right here. And then it does a little kick out, and this little leaf over here has a little swirl to it. So it's a it's a fun pantograph. So the leaf, one leaf is about the size of my fist, and it nests well together. You can see the texture there it created. So just really pretty. It uh, was a nice effect, very soft feel. Um, Mary said she didn't want flowers or anything. I think flowers would have competed with the quilt top, but just a nice, um, Again, it's called leaflet, so some swirls there, some chunkiness there, and uh, left a lot of room for just the softness of the quilt to shine through, so very pretty. This quilt measures 60, 61 by 77, so a nice throw would make a great quilt over the back of a recliner or to hang up and you know fill up a wall space. Uh, she's done a lot of work on this one. You don't always wanna hide it away, so very, very pretty. Love the colors. Love the colors. All right, let's move on to the next one. I have two quilts by Susie today, and this first one is a bright sampler quilt. Um, I don't have details on a pattern or details on fabrics, but bright colors. Um, lots of blocks are repeated, but you've got every different kind of block you can um, imagine. There's nine patches, there's a square and a square, um, lots of little half square triangles, um, just small things going on. You've got a couple of these, the what I would call a bow tie block. Just so much going on here, very, very pretty. Some blocks are more, more pieced, very um, very intricate, and then others are more of a wonky type shapes, like it's almost a crazy patchwork type, type block, so, so fun. And then she's done this border around, the novelty border all the way around. The fun playfulness of this, just the bright colors are incredible. She did a Tula pink print on the back. This is from the, um, tiny beast line, is that what it's called? But a tula pink, so again, repeating those same bright colors, so much fun there. And Susie even asked for a yellow thread, so it did yellow thread on the top. It's subtle, but when you get in close, you can see the yellow. And because of all the angular, all of the, um, everything that was going on this with this quilt, I chose a pantograph called Leanne. And Leanne has a lot of, it's all triangles, but they're all turned different ways. And um, this one went really well with all of the angles in the quilt, just the, the busyness of it. We just, we just um, splattered more busyness on top <laughs> with the pantograph. So you can see the Leanne, there's, um, I made this kind of small. You can make this larger, and I have done it larger on other quilts. But for this one, felt with um, the size of the, the blocks and just the, the, um, just the brightness and the, uh, just the busyness of this one that we just wanted to add more busyness. I just felt like this one was one of those kind of quilts. We just needed to add more busyness. So it's um, pretty small. The triangles are, I mean, those aren't two inches tall at the most. And uh, the yellow thread and then those triangles go in all different directions. And really, really fun. I don't, this um, is just beautiful. All the different fabric, the bright pinks, the multicolored, and and uh, some blocks repeat. Like I said, there's several of these yellow ones with the black scattered throughout the quilt. There's several of the bow tie ones, so there may be you know five or six different blocks just repeated four or five times, and um, bright prints. You know, just love it all. Like that Leanne print. It's very geometric, but it's a playful, fun one. Um, would work great on a baby quilt as well, any construction type quilts, um, anything where you have a lot of half square triangles that you with some negative space that you're wanting to repeat that design as well. It'd be a really pretty one for. All right, I'll show you Susie's second quilt.
Susie's second one is a patriotic quilt. This is made with three different blocks. So you have one um, just solid block, and then on the four sides of that one, you have a three strip block. So just three strips, but you're turning them in different directions. And then you have the four patch um, in the, you know, basically in the corners of those. And so by doing the blues um, on a diagonal, you create that diagonal line with the blue corners. I love this. And I feel like this quilt, the, um, the darker squares really pop out when you lay the whole quilt and you see it all in a, in a big design. And then you can really see the sashing work of the red stripes coming on those blocks as well. I just think it's a really, really, really pretty, very pleasant to look at. The backing fabric is this wonderful tannish color with the red um, stars, super cute. I like that from the back. Instead of using one of the fabrics from the front, um, switching to this I think is really, really pretty. For the pantograph, we, call it, we used one called Star Spangled Banner. So let me see if we can find a spot where you can see it. It has um, some large stars. And then it has the bunting type feel, just this little swirl right here that's more of a, kind of feels like the, the red, white, and blue bunting. And then you've got the stars, some smaller stars, and then you've got the larger stars, and then the bunting that um, connects them. So Star Spangled Banner is the name of that one. We used more of a taupey color thread on this one. The backing is a little darker. The front is uh, mostly darker prints. So a little darker than the cream, it's um, more of an almond, I think is what the actual name of it is, is almond. So just a little bit of a, a darker one, but you can see the stars and the bunting. Um, and this one nests together pretty well too. An easy one to stitch out. Sometimes with um, stars and things that you have very precise points, that's where you'll see some pulling on your, um, on your bobbin or your thread, that's where you can see tension a little bit and uh, so you may need to do adjustments there so you get those precise points on the edges of your stars and uh, not where it's pulling the thread a little bit with the tension, but it's all practice, all part of the work. Very pretty. All right, I have one more quilt to show you today. Rachel made this t-shirt quilt for um, a family member, and this is all t-shirts. This is, She's added some blue sashing on the, um, the right and the bottom of each one, and then some white sashing around that. She's done a really nice job of squaring up all the t-shirts. There are um, all different feels to it, so some of them are knit. Um, some of them are cotton, some of them are a little shiny. As long as you put some stabilizer on the back, keep those very square. You don't want uh, things shifting when you're cutting or when you're quilting. And they stitch up really nice. There's no trouble at all. So this one measures 80 by 80. There are five um, t-shirts across, five down, so 25 t-shirts. A great way to use up all of those uh, nostalgic t-shirts that we just don't want. You're not gonna, they're not gonna wear later on, you know, but they can, uh, remember by. So all different, there's um, um, sports in here, there's plays in here, uh, all different kinds of uh, different shirts. Then for the backing fabric, she chose this blue star. It was kind of funny, I had on the long arm at the same time, I had the patriotic one on one side and um, the t-shirt quilt on the other. Both had star backgrounds and both were doing star pantographs. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. So this one is also a new pantograph. This is called Dancing Stars. And um, I, I like this pantograph. It um, not as patriotic feel as the other one because the other one has the bunting along with it. It gives it more of a patriotic feel. I thought this one almost gave, is almost like um, an all-star type pantograph is what it kind of reminds me of. You have just a little bit of a of a line, um, almost like a an arc there as it um, goes into some of the other stars, but it's almost 
you know, basic 99% of it is just stars, large ones, small ones, mediums, um, and then just that little bit of an arc as it's traveling one to the other. This one stitched out really well. It's the first time I'd used it. And this, this is a cream color thread. Um, I didn't want to compete with any of the quilt or any of the t-shirts, so I didn't use gray gray might have worked but because this is a pretty stark white i thought the gray might it might darken that white a little bit so a cream color um, doesn't overpower the colors of the t-shirts you do see it a little bit on the white but sometimes a white will be too too strong on the t-shirts where i think the cream is a nice nice neutral it just um you know you see it on all of it but it kind of blends with all of it rather than not being noticeable on the white, but being very bright on the on the um, on the t-shirts themselves. So very nice job. And the backing fabric was this star, so that was kind of my. Um, and I think Rachel and I talked about you know stars or something along those lines. So when the when the backing fabric was also stars, it's like the stars were a great complement to the front. And just repeating that same design. This is for a boy. Um, so I um, think it went real, and this would work great for a girl too. A lot of athletic t-shirts and things. I think a girl would like the star pantograph as well. Very pretty. So Dancing Stars is the name of that pantograph. All right, and that is all the quilts that I have for this week. So if you are in need of long arm quilting services, my information is down below and you can contact me. You can download the prep instructions and order form that gives you all the information you need. And I will be back here next week, hopefully with some information about a new baby. But also I will be back here next week because every quilt is worth finishing. We'll see you then.